Hey everyone, welcome to Pearls of Eden. Thank you for joining me for this fabulous Friday, Freedom Friday. We are now on day 11, 11 of 31 days of prayer restoration for our marriages, revival, better than ever. And you know, many of you say, everything's going well in my marriage. I can feel you. Yes, everything is going well, but there's nothing to stop you from being preventative. The righteous woman, the righteous man knows that prayer intercedes and it's powerful. And so even though you may not have any issues in your marriage, you want to keep it that way. And prayer is the way to prevent things from coming your way. And also it weaponizes you to have the tools that you need when things do show up. You, my child, know exactly how to go forth. So today we're gonna to talk about his talk. What is coming out of his mouth? You know, there are so many men and women for that matter that they're always grumbling, they're always complaining, they're always murmuring. And we know that a complainer is not the kind of person that gets in the presence of God. God loves people who are grateful, who have a gratitude um, type of attitude. They can see the small things and still give thanksgiving. You know, that was one of the things that kept the Israelites, the older generation, from going into the promised land. They constantly murmured and complained, and the Lord heard them, and it angered him, right? And so we want to watch our speech because I've said this so many times that in our mouth, we either have the power to breathe life or death, blessings or curses, um, but that's up to you. And that's why you have to really ask the Lord to keep a guard on your mouth. But we're going to talk about that because what kind of conversations are coming out of your husband's mouth are yours. Is it negativity? Is it one of anger? Is it hatred? Is Are the conversations always so negative and bitter that it makes no one want to be around them because they know that they're not going to get positive they're not going to get any type of fruitfulness from the conversation. It is just going to be one that is just so negative and angry talk and frustration. And nobody, let's just face it, nobody wants to be around that type of person, right? People want to be edified, encouraged. In fact, in Ephesians, it says this, Ephesians 25, Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Being being a righteous man, yesterday we were talking about Proverbs 31, but in that particular passage, it talks about the man, that the husband that's known at the gates. Everybody knows him as an elder. People drop their hat when they see him. Why? Because he's an honorable, wholesome man. He helps his community. People know him as a giver. People know him as someone that has wisdom. He's fruitful. He's productive. He's prosperous. And he is a elder in his community. So many people don't do anything in their community. They're known as someone that's a drunk. They're known as someone that's always complaining. They're known as someone, everything but this type of man that we see that Paul is encouraging us to be. And he continues to say that, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. You don't want to be someone of debate, always trying to provoke and anger somebody and, and get somebody into a debate that you know that, you know, is going to cause strife. Those are the tactics of the enemy. But Paul says, let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but what is edifying and what is able to build others up. And we have to remember that before we speak, is it going to build someone up or is it going to tear them down? The information that you give them, is it going to be fruitful or is it just something that is just going to cause more further stress, uh, complaining, bitterness, strife? You have to examine things before you speak them. A righteous man does that. Let's see. Um... And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger. 
brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind, be compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ forgave you. And he goes on to say, follow God's example, therefore, dearly loved children. And we have to follow the example of Christ, right? You have to get rid of all rage, all anger, all bitterness, all unforgiveness, because like I've said in the video before, the enemy hopes that you hold on to those things, but you have to have a heart that forgives and not look back like a, a Lot's wife and miss the promised land because you keep looking back to your past. You keep looking um, back instead of forward. So I want to talk to you today about praying for your spouse, praying for yourself, that you all have a pleasing conversation that you all have words that are edifying and encouraging to speak to one another and that you don't tear down each other and so that i pray that god will give us all hearts that are of flesh that are willing to be compassionate and listen and lift up someone other's need uh, ahead of ourselves um, and that we just think before we speak. Think, is it going to edify? Is it of a good report? Is it compassionate? Is it gracious? You know, just it, think on the things before you say it and how you say it. And ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. And he definitely will. But too many people just spout out. They just say whatever, never knowing, you know, how that's going to affect another soul and another thing that i wanted to bring up to you all is job i talked to you about how this particular man in proverbs 31 he was an elder at the gate people looked up to him and when i was reading job today i saw that in job 29 when he talks about you know how long for the months have gone by for the days when god watched over me when his lamp shone on my head and by his light, I walk through darkness. And I think that's so beautiful because he's showing how prevalent God is in his life. That even in the darkest of times, he was there to walk with him. Oh, for the days when I was in my prime, when God's intimate friendship blessed my house. He's remembering those times because he's in despair right now. When the Almighty was still with me and my children were around me, when my path was drenched with cream and the rock poured out for me streams of olive oil. That speaks of prosperity. He had prosperity on every side, not just financially, but with his health, with his children, with his family. How many of you know that's a wealth that so many people um, they understand what it's like when it's gone, right? And he's just remembering when he had all of his children around him, when everything in life was just going so well. And, you know, then it goes on and says, when I went to the gate of the city and took my seat in the public square, he was acknowledged by so many people. The young men would see him and step aside. They would bow their head, you know, because he was the type of man that had wisdom on his tongue. He was the type of man that helped the widows. He was the type of man that could help you and guide you and give you the kind of wisdom that would lead you to uh, Christ, that would lead you to paths of righteousness, not to paths of hatred and not to paths of self-justification and not to paths that don't honor to God, right? And so I love that because that's the kind of men we want. We want great fathers in our households. We want great husbands. We want great community stakeholders. These are the type of men that we want. So we want to pray that they are able to have these qualities and that they put anything, any malice, any rage, any anger out of their heart, mind, and spirit. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity to pray with your people, Father God, as we're doing these 31 days of prayer intercessions for our spouses, Lord. We pray that you would watch our husband, watch our, our own tongues, Lord, that we would speak things that would bring life and not death, that we would monitor our, our conversations, that we don't say things that can be harmful, that will break another person's spirit, but that we say things that are truly edifying 
and encouraging, Lord. Help us to put a guard over our lips, Father God, that we know that you hear the conversations, that everything is written, Lord, and we think about that before we speak, that we're going to be held accountable for every single word in which we speak. So I pray that it'll be good, Lord. If there's any shifting and changing that needs to happen, Lord, gently help us to come to the knowledge of who you are. Gently remind us, give us your Holy Spirit, Father God, who will who will keep us and teach us. But Father God, give us ears to hear what the living God is saying so we don't miss a move, we don't miss an instruction, and that we're able to obey, Father. Give us the spirit of obedience that we want to obey and listen to your instruction. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. All right, guys, you all go forth. Have a blessed day. And don't forget to subscribe and like and share. And pray for I'll see you really soon, okay? God bless you all. And thank you so much for watching. You could watch anyone else's channel. But I thank you for uh, taking the time to hear what I have to say, what the Lord has placed in my heart to share. And I do not take that for granted. So I want you to know, thank you.